Hello, and welcome to LRC Art One. And we're going to start off in Russia, just uh, exactly the same as Golden, as they start to line up then for 27 laps around the uh, uh, Sochi International Track then. And um, i got to say, uh, Nolsey, as we're just waiting for the lights to go out, uh, what a incredible feat that we have achieved there. We're getting a, a silver a silver league underway. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really pleased with how silver's been going, really. I think um, it was a bit... Well, we weren't sure how well it's going to go, really, because obviously we weren't sure about who the drivers were and and what the, uh, what the sort of standard of driving was going to be like. It was a bit, a bit of an accident there, but um, <laughs> but uh, I think overall, so far this season, um, halfway through the season anyway, the the uh, calibre of driving has been incredible. Um, obviously, we've got our main man Glock, who's uh, who's doing a great job out front, but uh, all of the drivers have done a fantastic job and. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really good to um, to uh, have all these guys join ALR. It really is, and uh, I gotta say, um, I, I don't mean to be biased to silver at all, but I do look forward to uh, uh, commentating on the uh, silver league because it's just new drivers, and I'm really intrigued to see what they're driving, uh, what they're driving uh, technique and skill is like. It's absolutely fantastic. And talking of skill, uh, Glock has been fantastic. But as we're watching this uh, race go uh, unfold now. Uh, we uh, which is quite unusual for Silver, to be honest, isn't it? So, um, the first race, though, definitely was action-packed as well. And F1 2019 and Glock uh, were uh, were very close uh, in terms of race pace, but, of course, so Glock was on an alternative strategy at this point. Um, as we're just coming through the complete the first lap, absolutely fantastic action all the way up and down the field. Really enjoyed this. was on board Faxland, who, um, of course... Uh, um, was having a very strong start to the season, wasn't he? I think qualifying was a bit of a, is a weak point, though, though wasn't he, for Faxland, as uh, he is just making up through the field now then. But, um, yeah, as, as he said, as he said, Norsey, um, the silver has been an absolutely incredible success uh, so far. So, oh, it's just like saying that Van Dorn and the Droffer goes um, into each other, which is quite ironic. Um, <laughs> that is bad timing by me, but, you know, that's just standard, really, isn't it, for uh, me? Um, but, um, yeah, looking at these, some of this action, though, I think the midfield, um, this race really shows that the midfield was going to be such an incredible fight, wasn't it? And um, I think that that has been one of the highlights for silver, hasn't it, so far? Yeah, I think um, well, you pretty much from second because of Glock uh, down to down to seventeenth or so. Um, you don't know who's going to be who's going to be where, and that's where obviously there's quite a lot of fluctuation in uh, in positions in points throughout the season so far. And uh, yeah, I'll have to say hats off to all of them because I mean I'm, I'm looking through most of the races, and we'll see a few of them later on in the video as well. But looking through most of the races in the first half of the season so far. You couldn't really tell. You couldn't really call it, could you? I think there was about. You could have had about ten, twelve drivers who were about half a second away from each other throughout most of the race. And I think uh, there's, there's uh, well, this is a prime example. There's barely any spaces between uh, between them. All they're all really uh, performing to uh, performing to a, to a great level um, and fantastic driving from all of them. Very clean and respectful. Indeed, indeed. And uh, let's quickly, um, let's just quickly uh, talk about the uh, drivers in this uh, race, shall we? Of course, you may notice a few familiar names there. Of course, anyone who's a long-term ALR fans. Of course, we've got uh, Eva Hunter, the first ever winner of an ALR race back in Australia, season one. My goodness me, how far we've come since then. We also have a uh, double as well. We uh, made a couple of races, uh, appearances in uh, season one uh, for, go uh, for gold, which wasn't called gold back then, because we only had one race. And uh, we also, um, I think we also had Muck Vicious as well. So it's great to see some um, oh and as dog apologies as dog how um, how could I forget you um, but um, absolutely it was great to see some of the old guard come back as well really um, it was really interesting to see how well they got on and um, to be honest I gotta say that uh, they've been doing all right but I, I think these uh, new caliber drivers have really been so impressive they really have um, as we're just watching F1 2019 and Glock they're going side by side in a turn 18 and uh, sorry 17 and 18 on the follow lap that are uh, here um, on the sorry on the final part of the uh, Russian course, an absolutely fantastic route. Really was. I was enjoying this battle. Um, I gotta say, uh, as I you said in the um, uh, previous review, I get sweaty quite easily. But my <laughs> goodness me, I had a puddle underneath me once again. And this was only the first race of um, Silver. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And now look at it: it's Van Dorn and uh, McVicious <laughs> batting away at turn three. And um, I mean, a fantastic, uh, fantastic battle. It was great to see. It was great to see Dave back in action as well. Of course, Dave was a is a long uh, term uh, driver of uh, ALR. Um, 
unfortunately he has um, he has missed um, races every now and again due to due to of course the real world. But um, it is great to see the it's great to see some of the old guard actually driving in silver and mixing that with you uh, with you guys, which I think is what I know. Uh, oh, Van Dorn are getting very vicious on uh, Dave, but vicious there. Um, <laughs> so as uh, that was getting a bit brutal. We've also got Van Dorn and uh, I think Faraday who uh, changed his name after this, didn't he? So um, that that from that from your curveball. Um, of course, we also got Gamer as well, um, uh, who was um, who's been involved in gold as well. And look at that, a lovely bit of uh, um, a, a lovely bit of battling between one VR and uh, Gamer as well. Apologies, Nolsey, I'm just getting so into this uh, silver thing already, and I haven't even let you have a chance to um, um, voice. Oh, maybe um, <laughs> I forgot about that one VR Gamer there <laughs> coming together. Um, I got I I must admit I do say every time I commentate on one VR, I'm a big fan of one VR's uh, overtaking skill and his um, uh, very aggressive driving style. I love it. Um, but yeah, um, as this race was unfolding there, we, the race previously, we had Granty having an absolutely fantastic drive uh, going on the soft tyres. But uh, I think this race was very different, wasn't it? It wasn't very strategy um, focused, was it? It was more of just battling, wasn't it? It was brilliant. It was brilliant to watch around Russia, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that, well, they all showed their pace pretty much. Like you said, there wasn't any, any um, dif well, difficulties or anything with the strategy. I don't think it was obviously soft to medium on this one. Um, as you can see, F1 2019 was battling with uh, with Glock, which was uh, which was really good. It's a shame, unfortunately, that he had to leave the league for personal reasons. But because um, he was he was second in the championship um, up up to uh, well, quite quite a long way through the season already. Um, and I think at this point, obviously, the soft tires are just about uh, getting towards the end of their um, their sort of op well, optimal operating period uh, in terms of performance. Anyway, so. Uh, I think Glock's just about to uh, just about to get past him now, and yeah, there he there he goes, and then get, and then get on with it and get out get out the get out in the lead and, and go for it. But uh, yeah, I, I mean credit to all these guys. They've um, and like you said, there's there's new drivers and there's older drivers who been with ALR before and, and have come back to the scene. Obviously, we've we've, we've had to uh, get some get some new people in as we got a three wide into the first turn here. But um, I think everybody's sort of adapted. Again, it was the same as same as the uh, gold. They've had to adapt to um, to the new league, to the other drivers around them as well. So um, obviously, this being the first race, it's it's going to take. It's not gonna, it's not going to be instant. But um, throughout the season, I think then they've all grown accustomed to each other a bit more. And uh, yeah, it's it's been uh, fantastic to watch, really. Oh, it really has. And remember that um, this is a battle to get in. This is a battle for promotion to get into silver, as always. Uh, I think that was us talking game with our um, coming to blows there at turn 17. Um, but yeah, this is a battle to get into gold, isn't it? So the first three will get promoted. Very similar to uh, the football style in the front. It makes it very interesting indeed. Then now the uh, strategy has switched around F1 2019 on the medium tyres, as Glock is on the soft tyres. Um, I, I think I've, I sound very biased again, and I feel like a Murray Walker to Michael Schumacher back in the late 90s, early 2000s, where I just kept uh, just kept absolutely giving a Glock a glowing reference every time I see him watch. He's an absolutely fantastic talent, he really is. But um, uh, do not take anything away from 20, not F1 2019. Um, my goodness me, as, as you said, it's a shame he had to leave the league um, because of personal reasons. Um, but uh, I think that F1 2019 is a, ta is a very much chance as well. I mean, as we was going through the first couple of races, I felt that he was very unlucky, actually, to be fair. Um, some um, he had he had some good qualifying performances, but he just seemed to uh, get involved in uh, some uh, nasty scrapes here and there. Unfortunately for F1 2019, which is why the gap was uh, as big as what it was really, because um, F1 2019 was comfortably uh, had the pace to be on the podium there. But um, just a couple of scrapes, uh, which I think we may see later on this uh, review, is that YBR and Sirius Busch, uh, Sirius Busch um, has been almost ever present there. Also, a shout out to Kings as well, who has basically been in every single race of silver so far. Absolutely fantastic stuff as well. Great attendance as well from all these guys um, but of course with starting a new lead you also you've got to be very concerned because uh, it's new drivers isn't it and we're wondering whether they're going to whether they're going to be committed and uh, if they're going to show up week in week out and look at the names down there uh, Norsey I think that uh, the selection process that you did to get all these guys into silver you've done an absolutely fantastic job on that really um, I would say that uh, at least 70% of the drivers that is racing here is still racing um, halfway through the season it's brilliant stuff yeah I can't take credit for that because I think you did most of it actually to be fair so oh, good, I know. Um, um, but um, yeah, back on your back on your uh, your comment on uh, on um, serious mushroom and, and King's Island, they've both been the most consistent. Well, well, and Glock as well. I think um, well, and there's quite a few names in there actually. To be fair, that have been really consistent drivers, very reliable drivers, and and um, 
and you, you find that they're the ones who score the most points. Um, and they, I know King's Home and Sirius Mushroom have been their um, sort of midfield drivers, but they, they're very capable of getting some good points um, each race weekend. So, um, yeah, it's just hats off to um, to them to well, well, keep turning up and uh, keep consistent, really. Indeed, and they have been consistent, hasn't it? Again, uh, I would say the same for Kings, where uh, it's, it seems to have a very strong qualifying pace, and the race just goes slightly awry um, you know, for Kings. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to highlight some of those uh, <laughs> errors as well, so Kings might not be too appreciative of that. Um, I also found out that the Kings was a local boy like me, um, as in he just lives about five minutes away. Um, we haven't met each other yet, or possibly we have, who knows? Um, <laughs> but because uh, I look very different in real life. i, I got to say, I, I should only come out on Halloween. Um, it's a look at Van Dorn and Anston, they're battling away out of turn three. Um, and uh, you can see, it's, it's great. It's great to see um, you know, this. And I, I'm a very, I'm very critical about the uh, Russian uh, Grand Prix. And now I think it's probably one of the most boring tracks on the calendar. And uh, to start it off, um, there was probably some groans uh, of when the calendar was released. I was definitely groaning. I was like, well, that's not a great way to start the uh, league. Attack. But my goodness me, my negativity turned into absolute um, glowing, uh, glowing um, positivity after watching gold and silver as well. Um, really, um, I, I think I was buzzing after gold, and I got, after silver. My goodness me, I needed to, um, I needed to uh, take off the lay off the coffee because I was absolutely hyper after this race. It was a brilliant success, and uh, it was a sign of things to come and got there coming through to win his first uh, his first race of uh, silver there. Um, but he was on the alternative strategy there, which um, did help him towards the end. But uh, I think that we was very impressed with F1 2019 at the end of the race. And also Faxland as well, who um, you did race in Monaco last season um, and did a uh, fantastic job then. As we're now just uh, getting ready for the um, the final results from the Russian Grand Prix there. I got, um, uh, and you can see Glock there winning um, by a comfortable margin. But I think Faxland didn't get any penalties there. So fantastic stuff from uh, Faxland, who uh, made his way up for the field quite nice indeed there. Sirius Mushroom also did a good job there. Um, he's gone up from 13th to 5th uh, there. Um, really good stuff indeed there as we're just uh, taking a look at the uh, final classification from the Russian Grand Prix. What was your overall, um, what was your overall opinion of uh, Russia, uh, Nolsey? I was going to say we've been very positive in this um, <laughs> of this race so far in Silver, but what was your first impressions then? Oh, I thought the, well, the way that these guys started off the league um, with this race, I know maybe not everyone's favourite circuit, but uh, they all smashed it. I think they did a great job in, in uh, introducing ALR Silver. Um, and just going through the standings, obviously, the, the uh, funnily enough, the bottom 11, um, sorry, the bottom 10, uh, didn't score any points, unfortunately for them. But uh, yeah, just taking it through, obviously, Glock getting the, uh, getting the win and the fastest lap as well. F1 2019 coming second, did a great job in battling Glock as well. So uh, in the constructors, obviously, Red Bull, uh, Red Bull on top with 30. I think uh, Fahrenheit was uh, reserving for Red Bull as well, so he managed to get some few, a few points. But my Toro Rosso was the ones who uh, did really well, I think, in that one, King's Home and Drofter. But uh, yeah, on to, uh, on to Monaco. And the jewel in the crown of uh, Formula 1, then, and you see we've got some more incidents there. Um, as that is one of the, I think that was Asdog actually just um, getting punted out of a uh, sound of rock then. And as we cut up the hill as well. Um, I, uh, this wasn't a, uh, uh, this wasn't a very good race from uh, Glock's point of view, as we'll find out in a minute. Um, but, um, I think, uh, I think that this is probably one of my, uh, one of my favorite races, Silver. Um, and to be honest, it's very hard to choose your favorite races. Oh, that's a Renegade going very wide there in Dunham Mirabel. It's very hard to choose uh, your favorite races in Silver, isn't it? Because all of them are absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Um, when we was going through, just like picking the races to go, and oh dear, um, that wasn't fantastic, was it? Um, we got a bit of a replay from Monaco 2000 there, um, which oh, and, uh, that was um, <laughs> that was Tomb Fan having a big old clout with the wall there. Um, unfortunately for Tomb Fan, um, he seems to be on the sidelines an awful lot. Um, uh, unfortunately for him, but uh, I can't say much. I'm usually on the sidelines as well. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm in the commentary box. And LPE there has um, got a damage to front wing. My goodness me, they, they are so good at taking avoided action as well. My goodness me, that is fantastic. Fantastic reactions from the drivers there. Um, brilliant, some deed going down to see French Kane. Um, it was all action at Monaco. Uh, what, um, but what do you expect? Isn't it? I'd say it's the toughest race on the calendar. As uh, we see a double cream cat, and um, and also I think that was one of the Williams as well. Going back to the midfield action now. Is uh, oh, serious motion there? Um, uh, giving a clout to double. Then is a uh, double. Looks like. It too uh, a bit too uh, late there, didn't he? As they come up the hill, um, yeah. Going back to the going back to the actual races of silver, it was been fantastic. It was so difficult to uh, pick these um, to pick these races, um, wasn't it, Knowles? I think we was just um, banging our heads together. Like, but I like this one. I like this one. It was um, it was incredible. It's so difficult to miss out China, um, which was the second race season, which was a classic as well, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I think, um, well, like I said earlier, all these, well, all these guys have done a great job uh, in the first half of the season so far up to now, obviously, this uh, mid-season review. But, um, yeah, they've all done a great job um, keeping it clean, being respectful. I know there's going to be some incidents here and there, but, um, again, m most of the time there's there's no hard feelings and they've they've actually been able to um, to carry on. And there's, there's um, unfortunately, Glock's incident uh, where he's uh, broken his wing and had to uh, come into the pits. But um, they've all... Um, They've all sort of banded together, and they've really made um, they've really made uh, everybody uh, at ALR sort of um, sort of look up and, and think, well, actually these guys are doing a fantastic job, um, and um, and they're they're in the sort of second division at the moment. So yeah, there's quite a few who've um, who've um, created a good name with name for themselves, and they've all done a really fantastic job of uh, of keeping everybody um, keeping everybody happy, keeping me happy anyway. So so it's just um, making sure that uh, it, this just carries on because the driving standard has been absolutely incredible, and the uh, the behaviour of everybody in the in the in the races and in the chats and stuff has, has been great as well. It's been absolutely immaculate, it really has. As uh, Van Dorn has uh, left and joined the session, there, down in 15th position there. Yeah, unfortunately for Glock, I think that was the first chink of his armour we seen. I say the first, I think uh, <laughs> the first tout of literally little. The man makes any mistakes, that's a fantastic maneuver there from Fact Times. He took the lead in the uh, Monica Grand Prix, and from then on, um, he was very difficult to catch. And uh, we aren't going to spoil it for you. Oh, but he does, he, well, he does just so I state that he does have a glance and blow with tobacco there. So Fact Times taking the lead fantastically well over F1 at 2019. But yeah, going back to your point now, absolutely respect to the highest caliber. And um, I gotta say, it's uh, in, in a, a lot of because it's such a competitive environment. This is, isn't it? I'm quite surprised. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's just a game. It's just a game." But uh, it really isn't, is it? It's, it's about winning. It's about being the best, isn't it? And um, and of course, it can get very heated in the uh, it can get very heated in the comments there, uh, and also it can get very heated um, after the race as well. We've raced since then here, and it's going to get heated here as well as between Faxan and Glock going up the hill side by side then well unfortunately a uh, glock there uh, um, damaged this car there and i think uh, <laughs> it was it was a very close uh, competitive action there wasn't it nausea and what did you make of that incident at the time well i think it was um obviously it looked like there from that point of view of course as well the fact that sort of squeezed him into the wall a bit and that caused the damage but uh yeah, so it wasn't great. Um, well, it wasn't great et et etiquette, if I can get my words out on that one, um, for, uh, for from Vaxland's point of view. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was harsh and fair, but fair racing at the same time. That it was just um, unfortunate that there's too many walls around Monaco, isn't there? Unfortunately, there is. Um, if I had my way, though, I would have kept the track. Would have kept the barriers closer. Of course, they have widened up the track, haven't they, over the last couple of years? As Glock uh, making his first retirement in silver, and I think that's actually his only retirement to day it absolutely incredible isn't it my goodness me as um as i think we've seen the remains of Glock's car there as they go by as van door is having a good old battle here with serious mushroom um i gotta say the williams pair are absolutely fantastic serious mushroom and um ghosts they've been really good uh, together as well and also you mentioned the Toro rosso after the first season um after the first race and look at that facts like good on the outside that's his favorite party trick isn't it down on the outside <laughs> and see french game beautiful stuff and um he's left uh forza in his wake there from uh, Fax time was very impressive around here, obviously. Um, as, as you said uh, about his, uh, about his a little squeeze there, uh, coming up the hill out of Sandoval on, um, on a Glock there. It probably wasn't, it probably could have left him more room. And, um, yeah, uh, so uh, that was a bit of a shame. Now, that would put kind of a black marker on what was an absolutely fantastic drive from Faxland around Monaco. Really impressive stuff uh, from Faxland. I was, I had a um, glowing reference of uh, Faxland. This race was really good indeed then. And V Todd, actually, I want to uh, bring V Todd up. Um, and the first two races for V Todd, um, I think he struggled a bit. Um, in this race, though, um, well, qualifying incredibly well, actually, V Todd did. I was so impressed with V Todd and how he drew, uh, how quick he was in qualifying. Unfortunately, um, in the race, he just seems to drop backwards at the moment. I have described him as a Yarno truly. Unfortunately, it's not at all because qualifying is a um, is a unique skill in of itself, isn't it? Um, but um, in the race, he does seem to struggle, uh, Vitor, doesn't he? He seems to go backwards uh, quite a bit, doesn't he, Nozzy? Yeah, I think he's, he's been a bit unlucky in the races and that sort of thing. We've been very impressed with him, like you said, with, with the qualifying pace. It depends on the track as well. I think there's some, obviously, some tracks that. Uh, he's better at that he prefers more than uh, than others of course which is fair enough um but yeah it's just been a bit of um unfortunate unfortune in the races and um where it's been a bit of damage here or there or something like that but uh yeah he's been one of the, again one of the, one of the consistent drivers that i didn't mention before but uh yeah he's been one of the really consistent drivers who's um 
always been there and is very reliable and, uh, and consistent. So it's just a shame that uh, sometimes his, his luck doesn't go his way in, in the race. It doesn't. We've got a parked Renault in front of there. Uh, I got to say, I remember that. And, uh, I absolutely, that absolutely scared the living uh, bejesus out of me when I said that Renault there. I thought we was going to have an airplane crash. Oh, unfortunately, we did in the end there with Alpi, um as he has decided to uh, call it a day coming up the hill. Uh, yeah, but um, and talking of McLaren, let's talk about Hunter. Um, I have described. Um, I have described Hunter. Of course, remember uh, as we talked about Hunter in Russia. Yeah, he's a he's a very good. He's very good on the street tracks, isn't he? And it's, oh goodness me! And oh dear, oh dear. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's a smash and a half! Wow, how could I forget about that? Uh, that was a that was a scary old incident there, wasn't it? Coming out of the tunnel, um, goodness me! Um, Van Dorn there was um, <laughs> well, I would say he's quite lucky actually to just have that kind of damage. That was a scary old incident. I'd say that that might be um, one of the biggest in silver. And, uh, and you see after this race, and we're on at lap 23, as always, into the wall goes uh, as dog. We have got um, we got 14 runners there, um, I think, as, um, as I have to leave forward. I need to get my specs on. Um, out, on 23 laps there and 14 runners there, that is an absolute testament of the skill of these drivers there around Monaco as well. Um, remember, 96 there, we only had three cars uh, across the line there. So uh, perhaps these guys should be in the real world of Formula 1, maybe. Um, <laughs> who knows? But, um, yeah, as YB. He's got a virtual safety car at the moment then. Kings are doing a cracking job in fifth position now. Going back to the tour, also a point I was just about to make. Um, Kings Omen and Odrofa have been absolutely fun. They've been such a good pairing, haven't they, in the tour roster? You mentioned it in Russia. They are a really good pairing, aren't they? They're scoring consistently, and that's why they're so high up in the constructors at this present moment in time. Yeah, I think, um, well, I can't remember who, who, which way around it was, but one of them one of them asked, um, oh, we've got a bit of a bump there, but um, yeah, one of them asked, um, me if the other one could join uh, and be in the same team um, and I, I don't think we had it we had an opening at the time so it was, it was uh, yeah it all made sense so yeah it's been really good to have these two guys um, join us for um, join us in Toro Rosso for ALR so where they've been uh, probably um, in, the, in terms of uh, pairing in terms of a team as, as a two they've probably been the most consistent uh, performances um, or performers rather throughout the season so far uh, and you can see that in the constructors where they've done so well and uh, you mentioned an important word there, team. Uh, the team, um, I think, uh, especially in uh, especially in league racing, uh, sometimes the constructors does get lost in all the excitement of the drivers. Uh, of course, the drivers, uh, the drivers are gladiators. They should, uh, they should take, um, they should uh, be uh, front and center, shouldn't they, of the action? But team, uh, but the constructors, I think, is just important. As um, and uh, I think with the uh, the Toro Rosso pair, and I think Kings and Drop have complemented each other absolutely superbly well, and um, absolutely good stuff indeed. That there's a uh, we are and. And, uh, oh, Kings have through to back. My goodness me, then. Um, that's bravery, isn't it? Goodness me. Uh, to back is uh, not a corner which I would be uh, even attempt. I struggle to get through on my own, let alone try to overtake someone. Goodness me. Incredible stuff. But uh, we're coming to the twilight of this incredible Monaco Grand Prix. Look at that. That's a lunge down on the inside. That was more of a Hamilton esque lunge there from back in 2011. But uh, he made the move stick under this there. And um, that was why I became a fan of YBR. He's just incredible uh, aggressiveness. I do um, I do flinch sometimes, but I do. I love a driver. It's uh, just uh, it's not shy to go for a gap there. Uh, good stuff indeed. Then um, F1 2019 in second position mode and Hunter doing a cracking job in third position. Brilliant stuff indeed. Um, Alham making his debut tonight. Um, um, to, tonight, well, it, it technically was a, it was a night, wasn't it? Um, Alham um, making his debut in Monaco. Of course, I think he's a friend of uh, Glock, wasn't he? Um, and uh, he was brought in. And I think um, this this race was kind of um, a sign of things to come. Really, was the um, in qual qualifying a bit opposite to Vitov, Really, Vitov fantastic in qualifying. And whilst um, uh, how Hanoi would not do him a disservice in saying this, I think in qualifying he does seem to be more in the midfield in terms of one lap pace. But my goodness me, in the race he seems to make it work. Uh, whether it's strategy calls or whether it's just uh, race etiquette, um, I think uh, Alhan was um, uh, Alhan's become an absolutely fantastic addition to the league, hasn't he, uh, Nosey? Yeah, I think he's got his head screwed on the right way, so it's it's fantastic from him because he knows he knows he needs to finish the race and to score the points and um, he keeps it clean and respectful throughout the whole thing um, and if, it, if there's a driver behind him that is going to be faster and it's going to get the uh, it's going to get the place anyway he, he will um, let him through and then run behind just to make sure he can gain he doesn't lose so much time battling um, which is another great sort of tactic from him as well which is um, it's what you really it's what you really need to you need to be able to uh, make those calculations whilst you're in the race as well which is difficult sometimes we've got all oh, we've got her YBRs just spinning out there on on lots of traction around the casino square but um yeah so I mean I mean 
Alhan's done a fantastic job so far this season. Uh, like you said, a bit a qualifying, not the best, but um, uh, I think race performance. He's um, he always gains up, gains places, and does a great job as Faxland crosses the line in first position there for for the uh, it's third round. Sorry for uh, for silver, which is Monaco. Yeah, fantastic for facts and uh, um, breaking the um, breaking the monopoly the Glock had on the um, on the, in terms of that uh, top spot on the roster. Um, gosh, I've been, I've been watching too much MotoGP lately. Oh my goodness me, the podium, what should be saying? Um, Hunter, uh, best uh, best result to date so far in second position in the McLaren, just highlighting how good he was in the um, in the street circuit. And the F1 2019 there, uh, so as we mentioned in Russia, there was unfortunately a bit of bad luck again there, which uh, dropped him down to third. Then Droff, um, I think this is the race where he really um, started to uh, show um, so, show his metal then. Alhan, an incredible fifth position there. As um, Nolsey said there, um, he, uh, very much, he does uh, pick and choose his battles. A uh, certain Paul de Resta used to do that as well, didn't he? Um, especially earlier on in his career. And uh, that really helped the uh, uh, Force India, uh, now known as Racing Point, really climb with the constructors there. So um, it's very difficult to have your head screwed on in a, <laughs> an environment like league racing. But uh, Alhan, I think uh, the coolest cucumber is he in the fridge, uh, so to speak. Um, <laughs> as we're now moving on to the um, Drivers' Championship, I, I have all four um, awful analogies there. V Todd there, a strong performance there, and uh, ooh, we've got two 14 positions there. Um, uh, v Todd up into uh, someone needs to um, sort that out. Um, that's me. Uh, Facts and taking the lead in the championship actually over Glock, um, and um, that was the first time and only time that Glock has relinquished the uh, the drivers' championship lead there. Haas um, having a great uh, day uh, moving up into second with Mercedes dropping down for McLaren, and um, I think that was uh, Williams that saw him as well. Now we're in Silverstone. And uh, wow, what do you expect? It's the British weather, is there? And uh, it's absolutely <laughs> pouring down with rain. But um, I got to say that um, this was a masterclass from the Silver guys. Once again, they're throwing out all the all the amazing uh, all the amazing compliments here. But so I uh, think that um, it was absolutely awful conditions. And I remember after the race, uh, after the race, Nausey, um, I we were just full of praise for these guys, wasn't we? Because um, it was uh, all poor and kind of weather conditions in the first couple of laps here in uh, here in Britain, but. I can't. I can't remember bringing any major incidents. They were just absolutely on their best behaviour. It's fantastic driving, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely impeccable driving. I think. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember you said. Well, like you said, it, I remember after that race, it was. Um, I, I think everybody. I know there's. There's obviously there might have been some bumps and scrapes and things like that as well. But um, I think everybody was. Um, well, everybody was happy. They they uh, had a good race. Um, obviously, some people would have would have preferred more points here and there, but that's fair enough. But. Um, uh, everybody done. Everybody done a fantastic job. These conditions are never easy to race in, um, and I think it was. I think it was these sort of conditions for the whole of the race, wasn't it as well? Um, of, of my memory serves me right, but uh, yeah, everybody did a great job. Absolutely smashed it, and uh, and they were even even though um, even though these conditions were sort of well, they were appalling, of course, as you can see, but um, everybody did a great job in terms of keeping it on track and. Um, and even when they were battling with each other, they did it fairly, and and uh, yeah, it was it was good. It was good fun to watch. It really was, wasn't it? Um, the um, the condition, and uh, you'd notice a Faxan was uh, coming through the field after a, a difficult qualifying session. We'll come, we'll talk about Faxan later on. As um, well, I said Monaco is one of my favourite races. As well, perhaps actually, I might change my opinion and make change my view once again. As um, I seem to, I seem to change my story every minute, don't I? Really, but um, now I think I remember that uh, this race was actually my favourite at the time because I absolutely enjoyed this. This was a cracking race, it really was. Um, just taking a look on the left-hand side tower there, um, you got um, you got Lesnar driving the Red Bull. Of course, uh, he joined. He joined. I think he joined back in um, the fourth round of the season. There was uh, uh, Trafosi there uh, getting a full opposite of lock there, making his one only start in a silver. Um, but White Bjarne just having a cracking dance around the outside there. Bloody, uh, blind me, that was incredible. Stuff there. He almost, I almost, he almost made me swear that that was incredible stuff. Wow, well, well, well incredible, Brian. Well, well, brilliant stuff indeed. Then we had our safety cars um, double, unfortunately, um, unfortunately uh, met his end there uh, quite uh, quite heavily as well, didn't he? And look at, oh my goodness me, on the, um, <laughs> there was something going on up there, wasn't there? There's a Van Dorn there just getting it slightly wrong there. But a lot of drivers have had that problem before. And we had a big old smash there in 2014, didn't we, with Kimi Raikkonen? Um, so the safety car came out uh, for doubles incident. But those first four laps, no incidents at all then, was they? It was absolutely 
absolutely brilliant stuff indeed then. And then all of a sudden, the um, safety car came out and everyone seemed to uh, lose their minds, didn't they? I think they got too excited, didn't they? With the safety car coming out as uh, uh, Dave Fair just decided to um, give his rivals some issues there by taking away the polystyrene braking markers there. Very good tactical um, stuff there from Dave Fair. Man after my own heart. <laughs> so into the pits, comes, well, coming out of the pits is there. Uh, well. You see the first cars are coming in for the intermediate tyres. Faxlander, that was an incredible um, strategy choice here from Faxland, wasn't it? Because later on it would pay dividends. Um, how did how do you know about that, Nolsey? Like, was it just the feeling that he had that uh, the world conditions were changing? Yeah, it would have been. Um, yeah, it would be. Um, well, unless unless his um, race engineer told him to change it, but uh, um, yeah, you can usually you can tell when when you uh, when it's the right time to change tyres between wet and intermediates anyway. So um, yeah, he did a great job there in in terms of um, picking his strategy and. And, uh, and putting it all to uh, putting it all to the test, really, because it's still going to be difficult, uh, difficult racing, even whatever type of tyre on it in, in these conditions, isn't it? So uh, he thought he would um, thought he would put the, throw those on and see how it gets in. But uh, I think I, I, I going back to the safety car thing where you made that comment, it was well, it usually always causes a bit of panic, really, because you're not sure whether you want to pit or not. But uh, it really benefited the guys who went on to the Inters to start with, I think, on on this strategy anyway. Indeed, yeah, and um, yeah, it does. It does cause an awful, awful bit of panic, isn't it? As um, I can, I can attest myself on my career mode. I'm not really a league racer these days, as um, I seem to end up in the wall quite a bit. Um, but um, yeah, and uh, I gotta say, um, it, the safety car in the real world of Formula One as well, it, the safety car causes all kinds of shenanigans and stuff, doesn't it? And just think back to uh, Germany 2019. And remember, those guys have been doing it um, for basically their life, haven't they? So uh, yeah, safety car does um, throw a spanner in the works, doesn't it? Facts, I'm making this way nice through the field it's the highest uh, runner oh, of the intermediate tyres there it's getting very dicey between McVicious um, and when the Williams pair in there so uh, as um, that was unfortunate uh, as um, Trafosi also um, having unfortunately uh, not having a very good uh, time there as well as Dave um, doing a very good uh, three point turn there uh, but um, yeah I'll hand it in the back of the field as he's just uh, gone to the intermediate tyres well the top five sorry the top six is on the wet tyres as it stands at the moment on lap eight as, um, as uh, Droffa there is just uh, nudging LP out the way there as uh, I think it was because of the virtual safety car which does catch a lot of people out doesn't it um, of course it's a, it's a newer it's a newer safety mechanism isn't it to inform one um, these days so it does um, so it's still quite uh, takes a bit again you see look at this fax line going on the outside then it's showing that the intermediate tyres are the way to go I think a lot of the wet runners I'm surprised it didn't come in the pits um, if I remember rightly um, as I knock off the graphics there because I'm getting a bit too excited uh, that's just a standard um, <laughs> that's just a standard that, race, race, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> I need to keep my hands to myself really don't I uh, don't touch control of my cat out, but I just need to grab on the stuff when this excitement's uh, happening. Um, but going back to the uh, wet runners, I was um, at the time I was um, saying to the um, saying in the broadcast that uh, I'm surprised that the wet runners didn't come in the pit, especially with Faxon's pace here. Um, do you think that was a mistake by the wet runners to stay out for so long? Um, I think it could have been because, well, as you see, they do make that decision later on as they just jumped to lap 10. Um, and Faxon is now leading the race. I think they'll. Uh, they did realise that that was a that was a mistake, and they all did come into the pits um, to change that. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, it was just um, I think Faxan just called it right when the safety car was out, so he managed to save so much time when the uh, obviously when the when the deltas were were on um, to uh, to get the undercut really on quite a, quite a lot of them. Uh, now with these next uh, these next sixteen laps it is an absolute masterclass from Glock. Uh, when we was editing the uh, head uh, the highlights video, um, I got I wanted to put the last sixteen laps in, but um, of course uh, <laughs> of course we got unfortunately due to uh, time constraints and things like that, um, we couldn't do that. But Glock, this is a masterclass from Glock. He is incredible when he's out in front, isn't he? Because his pace is just absolutely mesmerising. It is scary stuff to say the least, isn't it? Uh, if I was racing against Glock, I'll be up um, halfway through the night with night sweats there. But um, I think that uh, Glock, uh, this was a masterclass. He just showed that he can race, go wheel to wheel as well, can he? I, don't, I think up to this point, um, there was a couple of there was a couple of rumblings, wasn't there, about uh, uh, Monaco and how him and Faxland uh, were battling away. And uh, of course, uh, I think it was Faxland who just didn't give him enough space. But here, he kind of proved it, didn't he? He showed that he can race wheel to wheel. It was absolutely fantastic drive from here on in from uh, Glock. Um, <laughs> he was. It was like it was like a, was like a shark that smelled blood in the water, didn't he? He was just absolutely flying uh, on the on this seven stage race. Um, I think the Glock just showed um, how incredible it was. Well, dry. Um, it was impressive from Glock, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he uh, he likes the wet conditions, and he, I don't know why, but uh, he can just uh, he can just go, go just as just as fast with a. Uh, 
with a set of inters on than the kind of the softs and things. Yeah, and that's scary as well, isn't it? Um, uh, with the, and you can see him set the fast up, and I think that he was on his way to his third Grand Slam in five races. That is an incredible stat, isn't it? I do love my stats. I, um, I like to read them out and qualify in every, in every uh, single silver qualifying session, which probably does annoy the drivers a bit, actually, of course. But um, I'm here to I'm here to entertain the viewers, and then the viewers do love a good stat or two. Well, I certainly do anyway, as we're just watching Alhan and Asdog going side by side. My goodness me. Um, Alhan really found his feet when he uh, threw on the intermediate tyres. He was, um, I think he was a lot better than everyone else, but um, he was absolutely flying through this field again then as Glock just sives on the inside there, going up to third position there. We've got nine laps to go in this race now, and um, every lap, every lap, I'll just get more and more tense in this race there that, <laughs> because I wasn't sure, is he going to be able to do it? Because um, Faxon had a six point, well, had a seven second lead uh, about over a team, over um, uh, Glock's teammate Lesnar at this stage of the race there. And at nine laps to go, um, it was, I thought it was going to be too difficult uh, personally but uh, my goodness me a uh, Glock showed the world how incredible he is isn't he as he overtakes Lesnar and um, we talked about the uh, Toro Rosso pair and I think that uh, Lesnar uh, did show flashes of the brilliance as well and you can see that in there it's, oh, the track is almost dry at this stage isn't it as um, it just it's just the uh, summer rains isn't it of uh, Silverstone uh, where it was absolute it was basically we had three seasons didn't we in this race um, incredible stuff and I think that uh, then the guys came in for the um, dry tyres at this stage and um, uh, it was of course they all had um, they all had options of soft mediums or hard tyres I think everyone went on the soft tyres at this stage so it was a sprint to the finish now um, and that's what I quite like to see facts and of course uh, reacted straight away everyone I think it was good for draw for LP and VTOT though to um, come in a lap earlier than uh, what um, than what Jeff to go in this race look at that Glock there is almost it's, it's almost under a second behind uh, behind facts and that was absolutely that pace is scary to say the least isn't it um, a shout out to Forza. I think this was Forza's best result to date um, in the uh, first couple of races there. And Forza uh, did a great job, really, of uh, of keeping his head and keeping the strategy calls absolutely on point there. It was great to see uh, Forza doing a um, good job here uh, as well. And they're just looking down the order there. Alhan in 10th position moment. I think it came a cropper, actually. Um, which is why he fell down the order, unfortunately. And you can see there is uh, Glock is taking the lead then of the uh, British Grand Prix with four laps to go then. So uh, and he also got fast stuff as well, just to uh, just to rub sort in the wounds out, really. And, um, just to rub it in there. <laughs> yeah, just to rub it in there. Um, absolutely. That was, I think that this was Glock's most impressive race to date um, in a silver and uh, I think he, I think this is where he highlighted how much of a big deal he was uh, today. But yeah, just to mention on Forza, uh, getting um, getting a uh, third position at the moment, and um, he was doing a he was doing a very good job uh, uh, in a third position there. And Glock coming through uh, to win the um, British Grand Prix. I think that was his fourth race win in five events. Uh, um, really good stuff. But I um, <laughs> I think that the battle between Fax and Glock, I was really uh, I was really enjoying it up to that point. It was good stuff indeed. Then as we're just waiting for the final results then from the British Grand Prix. Uh, Quick word on Forza, though, Nolsey. I, as I was saying, I think he did a cracking job in that uh, race. And getting on the podium, he just nailed every call that he uh, made in that race. Yeah, um, he's one of those, again, another reliable driver who, who turns up. He's actually uh, um, the, the, well, the, the wondrous thing, the, uh, the, well, the, mo the most thing that amazes me, really, is that he uses the D-pad to steer the car. Um, which I think is just incredible, really, because it seems impossible for me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a great driver, and uh, he does a he does a really good job most races and and um, yeah he did he did a great job in this race of obviously keeping out of trouble and uh, controlling the car in in those conditions and uh, and getting the getting the rewards for it. My goodness me, he deserves driver of the day more often if he uses the D pad. Goodness me, that's back to the future kind of stuff. Serious motion going up into up into the brink of the top ten, uh, and uh, also has dog moving up as well. A uh, big move then was Forza a uh, cracking job today, and same with Lesnar, both moving up two positions in six and seven position, and everything else. The status quo also Hunter getting in front of YBR. It's a season long battle those two are. They're still locked uh, with that battle right now. Renault moving up to f uh, fourth position as well as uh, Racing Point uh, had an awful day and so was dropping down. Now um, we're into the Hungarian Grand Prix and a uh, young. Lights, who was um, who was a uh, sub in the Red Bull, have um, got them um, got um, well, did a very good job today, didn't he? Uh, the uh, Glock there is um, battling away as well, but um, you know I think Young Lights has actually uh, disappeared off into the distance there. So I was, I was actually thinking to myself that doesn't sound right, but because um, I think Glock uh, at this stage was just a hundred percent record in qualifying, and uh, um, you see Drada making I think this is Drada's uh, first appearance actually, and uh, he was doing a cracking job in second position. They're really mixing up the Asdog uh, fly up the uh, field as well. This was Asdog's best uh, qualifying. Um, best, uh, best uh, event performance to date uh, after a very difficult start then 
And um, they were very again, once again, very well behaved um, in Hungary. Um, I seem to see that. I, I seem to say that quite a bit. Um, the first lap is uh, usually one of the more exciting uh, laps on the Grand Prix. Oh, as I say that, there's um, a bit of Alfa Romeo wing come off. Then, so uh, there you go. I've um, put the kibosh onto that one, haven't I? Uh, but I was going to say the uh, the <laughs> the first couple of laps in uh, in Grand Prix is usually the uh, <laughs> most watched because it's where the chaos happens, isn't it? Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for uh, unfortunately for the guys that want to see a crash, uh, that's not going to happen. In Silver, is it? Um, of course, uh, but uh, that doesn't matter, is it? Because a lot of our viewers are here to watch the quality of the drivers as uh, they're coming through these uh, very technical, twisty uh, circuit. And we're on to complete lap one then. Um, it's a shame for Aztog, really was actually, because um, I felt Aztog uh, was um, on course for a very good result. As uh, oh, is um, Lesnar is uh, having a couple of issues there with uh, Fran, and this is also Fran's first race as well. And again, Fran, um, since this race has uh, just been ever present, so it's great. Fran's been an absolutely fantastic addition but before we go to Fran let's talk about Asdog a minute if, um, if it's alright with Nolte but uh, I think Asdog um, he, um, he had a very difficult start to Silver I thought he was going to be like a consistent point scorer but uh, it hasn't been the case in this Hungarian Grand Prix showed that um, damage is thrown on the first half and it just it didn't seem to go right for him did it? Yeah he didn't he didn't have, didn't have much luck um, so far in the season really for for Asdog and um, yeah he's one of those racers who's very reliable um, and he is quick in, on his day and can get a good, good uh, haul of points. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it just wasn't going his way um, so far this season anyway. No, unfortunately not there for us, dog. Uh, v Todd there once again uh, flying up for a position, showing that the uh, t- the uh, tough, twisty circuits he is really a master on, isn't he? On board with his teammate Hunter at the moment, um, as he is just a batting away of facts, lad. Uh, we've also got... Um, and yeah, just going back to this, we've got FIFA Beefy in 12th position as well. But going back to Fran there, of course, uh, Fran uh, making his debut here in uh, Hungary today. Uh, and um, i got to say, um, Fran's been a very good addition to the league, hasn't he? And um, again, uh, it's, uh, it's impressive with all these, uh, all these as a uh, VTOD there. Once again, there, I um, put the curse on um, on VTOD. Uh, I really apologise. I'm thinking he probably hates me, actually, because every time I say something good about him, uh, he seems to go into the wall. Uh, vir- uh, virtual safety car has been deployed because of uh, VTOD's um, issue there. But uh, yeah, Fran has been an amazing in addition to the league, hasn't he? I think I've really enjoyed watching Fran at race, and uh, he's uh, he's since his Hungarian Grand Prix. I don't think he's missed the race. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, he's um, a great driver. Obviously joined late as a reserve. I think he was res- this was his first reserve appearance in the racing point. I think he's now he's now full time into the Renault. But um, yeah, he's he's getting, he's getting there. He's obviously um uh he scored his first points um more recently um uh, so yeah he's he's a good he's a good driver and uh yeah it's a pleasure to have him in the league as well Facts and uh, displaying um, some aggressive driving there out of turn twelve. Um, I was um, I was grimacing there, but of course, uh, uh, Facts and uh, doesn't like to uh, give an inch or two, does he? Uh, which um, I gotta say is uh, it's quite uh, it's quite admirable. Times sometimes so run a Hungarian Grand Prix can't really uh, do one the Hungarian circuit can't really do that, can you? A uh, Glock there um, on the hard tires as well. We haven't even mentioned that. I think he's on the hard tires. Is he? He is indeed. Then it's like um, I've got good spec savers. Like, my eyes are absolutely appalling today. Um, Glock on the hard tires, absolutely fantastic stuff from Glock. Um, really is indeed there. Uh, of course, the hard tires is definitely the preferred um, strategy, but it's very hard to do, isn't it? And look at Forza, <laughs> tons on the outside. Once again, Forza has become an absolute incredible, it's come to start this highlight um, uh, video today, isn't he? Um, so far, two very good races, and that, that was a cracking uh, battle on the outside. In fact, and all over the back of uh, Dra as well. Um, Dra, uh, of course, um, this was his debut, and uh, oh, uh, Faxan, once again, he's loving that corner, isn't he? But it's just not paying off for him. And then Hunter sneaking up the inside as well. Um, as, uh, this is not this turned into a commentary session again, isn't it? My goodness me, how do you work in Nolte? <laughs> into the pits comes and trial, and he was on the soft tyres. Um, but um, yeah, uh, we spoke about we spoke about um, Fran, and let's speak about Dra as well, because Dra in the um, on soft tyres, man. But uh, he, he's been floating in and out of the league since making his uh, debut here in uh, Hungary. But um, I, I got to say. Um, Oh, it's uh, Ghost there has um, gone to a different time zone now, hasn't he? As he went slightly wide. Again, I think Adra has um, showed flash, a flash of the brilliance. In qualifying, again, uh, he seems to be really good, but race, he seems to drop back. Um, but um, uh, again, your thoughts on Dra? I think he, I think he's an incredible racer, isn't he? Yeah, you've got to get the balance right between, um, obviously, your qualifying performance and your race performance or race pace. So... Um, yeah, I think he's just been a bit unlucky in terms of uh, in terms of converting the converting the uh, qualifying ability into uh, into the race. But uh, well, as, it's, it's always a di- it's always a bit, bit of a difficult uh, difficult challenge to uh, to get you set up right for um, for both. 
So um, yeah, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to come back and uh, and show us uh, show us how to do it properly in the in the next one. But um, yeah, King's home there. Unfortunately, I've come on a, come on a bit of a cropper and uh, is it, that's turn turn three, I think, isn't it? And then turn four is the right hander. Uh, it's always a bit of a nightmare those two turns because you you can always get it wrong quite easily there. Is a uh, He's uh, overheated the tyres there and had to, uh, had to, uh, sp well, or, or, unfortunately, he's caused the car to spin out again. He's not going to appreciate that, is he? Um, maybe I should have cut. Uh, maybe we should have cut that bit out. But um, <laughs> I, th I think it, he loves he loves a bit of good banter, doesn't he? Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Kings. I think I remember. I'm sure Kings um, raced in this race um, in gold as well. And he had a fantastic race in gold. I'm sure he did. Of a finishing fourth, it's all oh, getting very close again. Uh, what if you are in fact said, Oh my goodness me! I'll, I'll pay to see those guys race every day of the week they're incredible but they're incredible battlers aren't they and look at them <laughs> going side by side why we are um he's quite up in the championship at the moment isn't he um he is um he's flirted on the promotion places uh why are so i think he started to really come into his own um uh, i think it was from um i think it was from uh, monica not monaco sorry uh, i think it was from uh, silverstone onwards where he really started to um we started to become a very big, uh, very big uh, competitor in this uh, Silver League. Fantastic stuff to do. Ron Boer Hunter, um, who is in fifth position moment. Alhan in sixth position. And uh, Alhan, very similar to Glock in terms of his uh, strategies running it. Of course, we know them two are good friends, and I think that they do share their experience on the strategy, which um, which I think is a very good testament. I wish that some people would share their strategy with me, or be, I think Knowles he tries to, but unfortunately, I usually end up losing a win or two. Uh, so, um, Alhan, um, Alhan and uh, Glock doing a very similar strategies, and uh, I I think that um, a lot of times, I think this race in particular, actually, it really helps Alhan, and, uh, and I think it shows it shows towards the end. And hopefully, I'm right on that. Otherwise, I'm going to look very, um, very silly, which is uh, nothing unusual, is it? Uh, as uh, we've, uh, we've just followed this action there, we're on lap 12. We've only had uh, one retirement so far. Again, um, DNF rates in the uh, silver up until this point. And this is round six. I thought it was absolutely incredible stuff. It really was. Uh, uh, the DNFs, the DNF rates in the first uh, in the first uh, part of the race, where you seem to get a lot of DNFs in other leagues, but soon not to be in silver. Absolutely incredible stuff. There's a lovely shot here from uh, Alhan's uh, DR uh, from uh, Alhan's uh, rear. Down. Lovely shot of the DR. It's and beautiful. Indeed, he's making his way up to full position now with Ghost just behind him as well. Now, this is all the pit, pit action, isn't it? Forza uh, was having an incredible drive. Um, I, I think Forza wasn't feeling too well in this race, was he? Um, as I, if I remember rightly, and he wasn't feeling too confident on his um, on his pace there. But my goodness me, his first uh, stint there was absolutely fantastic uh, from uh, Forza. Really good stuff indeed there. Now, Alhan has moved up into a second position now as well. So he's in and out. Um, and of course, strategy is key around Hungary, isn't it? To, isn't it, Nolte, to uh, really propel yourself up? And I think Alhan uh, uh, really nailed it, didn't he? But uh, Force is doing well as well. So, uh, talk us through the uh, different uh, the different strategies around the Hungarian Grand Prix circuit. Well, it's, it's pretty much uh, well, it's a dry race anyway. It's pretty much uh, soft. Uh, sorry, not soft. Uh, medium to hard, um, or all the other way around. As you can see, Glock and Alhan doing. Uh, the uh, alternate strategy at the moment, um, and Lesnar down in sixth. But uh, yeah, I think both well, both of those guys at the top, um, like I said, they know each other quite well, so they were uh, following each other on the strategy, um, although a bit clock being a bit faster at the time. But um, yeah, it was just a question of, um, of what sort of laps the pit stops occur just just before those pit stops. Um, what I was what I was noticing actually is is second down to twelve were um, probably, well, every every car was about uh, half a second apart from each other, um, separating 10 drivers. So, um, again, back to the back to the midfield. Just highlights the fact that um, these guys are incredibly close when they're racing and they're doing a great job of, uh, of uh, keeping the cars under control. Indeed, and uh, I got so every time I've commentated on silver, I've had to, um, I've, I've had to get um, the old energy drink on the go. I've really get a bit of monster. I've had to have three cans of monster before starting a uh, commentator, uh, commentary session with a uh, silver because I'm going to need as much energy as possible. I think I might start to have a banana sandwich because apparently they're really good for um, energy, aren't they? And look at this, and these guys are full of energy at the moment. And look at Hunter giving him a squeeze. This is your YBR, and that's what I enjoy. Uh, you're exactly right, Nolsey. Um, the battle 
playing in the midfield it's been brilliant I think that's what I've enjoyed the most uh, don't get me wrong I think uh, Glock uh, I've been watching Glock do um, apply his trade uh, on this game is um, is a privilege isn't it but in the ba- in the battle of the midfield uh, oh is, um, there's, a, there's a McLaren going off there of Hunter there is, uh, that perilous turn four um, <laughs> that pesky turn four isn't it really causing some issues in this race you touched on that earlier didn't it very slippery because you um, you need high down force in this uh, in this race don't you of course you need to just um, put a barn door on the back of these cars in it just to uh, stop from spinning but even then that turn four can really catch out the um, catch out the unwary can it but yeah midfield battle has been fantastic and I think we put this race in because it absolutely highlighted apart from the fact it was absolutely great as well unfortunately as dog um, uh, unfortunately his bad luck seems to continue doesn't it um, but uh, in this race uh, the midfield was fantastic and I think apart from being a good race that's the reason why I put this race in because it absolutely showed how competitive the midfield was and that is only our second retirement in this race wasn't it on lap 19 and um, we had some near scares didn't we uh, but unfortunately uh, the racing point there uh, did, um, did come to a abrupt end then and safety cars out and now the safety cars back in and um, Bert Meinlander has um, got a nice job in silver hasn't he it doesn't really see the safety car much so uh, Bert Meinlander must love Mondays um, <laughs> clock is coming through to start again then Fax and uh, becoming a um, it's becoming a was well, becoming a four in the side for Glock wasn't he um, as he kept uh, getting those second positions on fours uh, as I mentioned uh, having a crack in having a crack in first in then Alhan I think was absolutely spectacular in this race uh, it really was I think that this was uh, Alhan's best race to date in the first um, in the first part of the season as well and uh, they're just making their way down to the um, new extended turn well it's not new is it it was back in 2003 they did that so um, again they're um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going and look at Forza and Alhan uh, this was getting a very intense battle wasn't it in the final stage of the race there and um, I thought he was going to have a go down in turn three then but uh, look at this and there's a uh, fact I'm just pulling away and Alhan having a good old scrap here I was really enjoying this battle uh, it's brilliant good stuff indeed and look there ghosts there um, the also opportunities are just sneaking in on the inside there and I bet Alhan was very uh, was very furious of that wasn't he of a ghost there sneaking through as he comes through the young um, chicane now look at this and <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> goodness me there I know we've had a safety car but still we've had for two laps afterwards you see a lot of field spread around this track but my goodness me these guys just seem to be um, attached to each other don't they Van Doren got on the inside of what we are um, but uh, YBR is not going to give up, is he? I'm a huge fan of YBR, as, um, as you've probably heard uh, already in this um, in this uh, uh, review. Um, YBR, but uh, Van Dorn there is going to sneak on the entire. Oh my goodness me. Uh, Van Dorn there are just uh, thinking better of it. Uh, for that would be interesting. Well, listen, they're just uh, batting away as well. And FIFA Beefy, we haven't touched on FIFA Beefy much, have we? Um, I think his best race was in a uh, spa, unfortunately, for FIFA. We did decide not to. Oh, uh, cover it. And uh, maybe that wasn't a very good time to mention his best races. Unfortunately, he's um, pointing the wrong way now. <laughs> But, um, Great time in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, FIFA though in Spa, I thought he was a uh, fantastic. He um, he had a rocket up the uh, up that the fuse of that Ferrari. He was fantastic in um, Spa. Um, I know Spa is not on the um, on this review, but uh, I think FIFA really. Um, Really showed a good account of himself as Forza has gone. Um, oh, I think he's off to the water park there. He's got out too wide there, and unfortunately, he's let himself through. I think this is where uh, where it starts to become very difficult for Forza as he really starts to struggle with the uh, tire management. Um, as well, but um, just going back to FIFA Beefy, I think um, Monaco, um, sorry, um, Spa was a fantastic, uh, was a fantastic race for FIFA. And uh, what I'm, well, the point I'm trying to make out, as um, <laughs> which is basically I've gone around the long way, uh, was um, of how incredible these drivers are, isn't it? Every driver seems to have a favourite circuit, whereas FIFA Beefy and Spa, uh, or um, here today, our hands on a crack and drive in uh, Hungary, isn't it? As Drago's on the outside. Oh goodness gracious me! Oh dear, he's lost it. Oh dear, and um, he's um, <laughs> unfortunately he's not the first victim of turn four, and he won't be. The the last either as uh, draw, but I gotta say, uh, I think I remember at the time saying that uh, for a racing point of YPR has made a steal. Um, <laughs> because he got absolutely um, he got crashed into the side of, but he just was <laughs> uh, dusted down like it was nothing. Um, goodness me, I wish I was like that racing point. I'm a bit fragile these days, uh, so well done to uh, YPR, but unfortunately. Unfortunately, going back to Forza, um, I think his tyre really started to run out of life at this stage, and he was under con- const- um, con- const- um, constant bombardment. There's my words there. Um, uh, how um, how difficult is it now there, uh, Nosey? Is it just to keep your head when your tyres have just fallen off the cliff like Forza's has here? Uh, there's not much you can do, really, is there? You've just got to, um, you've got to manage it and try and uh, try and get it in the race. Obviously, his defending against YBR um, was, was, it was strong, but I, I think it was fair at the same time. And, You've got to you've got to try and defend as much as you can your position to 
um, of course, to uh, to gain as much points as you can at the end of the race when the checker flag falls. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's, at some stages it depends on the track as well. It's sometimes inevitable that he's going to get fast, uh, as he does right now. But um, uh, yeah, it's just it, you've got to just keep your head on and uh, and hope for the best, really, and, and just keep keep getting the laps in and uh, keeping it on track and uh, and doing the best job you can. And a serious mission there. Um, uh, I was, uh, I thought he was going to have a go on the outside there. Of course, Grosjean had a go on the outside there, but unfortunately got penalised. But I really enjoyed that take uh, from Grosjean. And, uh, unfortunately, that didn't uh, pay off. And um, just going back to the Haas battle in there, um, whilst uh, whilst she was elaborating on the uh, tire on the tire issues that uh, Forza was having, um, we was talking about how great the Toro Rosso boys was. I think this was a bit of the opposite, wasn't it? It's facts that was determined not to let his teammate through. I could kind of understand that, and I'm because uh, of course uh, with Glock almost uh, 15 seconds in front, there was nothing really to gain from Alhan, but the amount of time that they were losing battling, Ghost Recon was uh, really getting intrigued here. Um, uh, what did you what do you make on a team orders at Nolsey? Uh, do you um, uh, are you happy with uh, are you happy with team orders and sometimes uh, letting the guys through? Um, I suppose it does depend on the circumstances, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, I think these guys they they didn't really want to work together because obviously the only the only uh, difference they were going to get was the uh, was was who's going to be P one uh, or P two and P three. Uh, so there wasn't really giving much uh, much change really, was there? Um, unless they took each other out, but thankfully they didn't. But um, yeah, I mean, you see it with um, with other other leagues and other, and these guys in this, in, the, in this league as well. I mean, um, you've got to work together to uh, to get the most points for your team, um, and that's how you get out the constructors. So uh, yeah, so I mean, is uh, at the end of the day they uh, they have to they have to battle really to uh, well, Alan wanted to battle to obviously get uh, get that second position as Glock crosses the line in first but uh, so long as it's fair and clean racing um, yeah there's no issues with it at all uh, definitely not no and um, I just I just wanted a racist point of view there uh, it's, uh, it's um, to be honest it has caused a lot of a stir in the um, in the um, past hasn't it of course with Ferrari in Austria back in 2002 hats off to um, hats off to uh, Double Cream Cat and uh, to Glock Alhan in fact and for no penalties at all then um, really good stuff indeed there uh, absolutely fantastic stuff uh, from those guys Van Dorn had a very good race as well in uh, the Mercedes I think that was his st strongest race to date from Van Dorn who um, is uh, who ha I gotta say he's involved in a lot of battles isn't he and he seems to come off worse doesn't he um, but um, he's, a, he's a man that uh, he's a man that just keeps going doesn't he and uh, I think from days like that where the tyre was definitely um, high on the agenda he did a great job to uh, finish in the top 10 so well done to uh, Van Dorn unfortunately uh, Forza's incredible race um, didn't end in a reward as um, his tyre just came off and I think him and Hunter uh, came a cropper on the final lap didn't they um, which was a shame for us uh, because up until that point up until like lap three I think he was five six laps short of what would have been an absolutely incredible result from for us uh, in the um, championship then Ghost Recon moving at three positions and Van Dorn there um, showing that uh, showing he had a very strong race up until that point moving at two positions as well fantastic stuff and um, in the driver's championship Alham moving at five positions with YBR also moving up to fourth as well the top three remained unchanged then in the constructors, Toro Rosso moving up to full fair, underlying good uh, team ethnic. I was talking about Haas there, um, perhaps uh, not having very good teamwork, but well, it didn't show there, did it? Is there second? <laughs> anyway, coming into Austria and Australia now, we didn't have no Glock on the um, on the grid, so for the first time ever in silver, we had a different pole sitter, we had a different car on the grid, and that uh, on pole position, that was Hunter. Forza there showing some good and qualified performance once again, then, and um, and Fran also doing it right up the grid there as well, uh, in third position, so good stuff from Fran, as uh, so Razor um, just a uh, himself back around there um, here in Australia. I don't, I'm not sure if people like Australia much as we had a low attendance here um, in two races in a row there but uh, it didn't matter for the quality did it? I said in gold um, the other day about uh, oh dear uh, there's, um, there's a ghost there it's pointing the wrong way at the Brundle turn now so that ain't going to help him too much but um, as I said on the gold review um I think it was about quality rather than quantity in Australia, but because uh, um, again, like with gold, this was an absolutely it was a nail biter of a race, wasn't it? Really enjoyed this one. Yeah, it was uh, it was an entertaining one. Obviously, like I said, it was a bit disappointing not to have a uh, have the uh, complete grid there, but uh, yeah, I think after the um, after the initial uh, panic of t of lap one, rather, uh, everybody sort of uh, got into their got into the groove and uh, and uh, put on a really good show. Oh, they did indeed, and a show it was as well. As um, we're just watching V Top there, um, just struggle as well. Uh, so with uh, Glock not racing, then um, it was all up in the air of who was going to win this race, wasn't it? Uh, of course, Hunter, um, who uh, who uh, stole the march as FIFA retired from the race there, unfortunately, uh, from a very competitive uh, fifth position there. And we see um, Kings almost uh, almost going into the. Uh, 
pit wall there and talking on the other side of the pit wall was a uh, FIFA Beefy and I still don't know how he got there I, got, um, it was, uh, I think he must have uh, done a Sutil uh, there and we've also got double zero as well this was double zero so I think this was double zero's first race there and um, double zero um, very similar to uh, Fisher he seems to be all a bust doesn't he in terms of uh, very, in terms of he's either on the podium or he's out of the race there for double zero so I think consistency um, could be a problem for double zero if he can knuckle that down perhaps do you think he's going to be a championship contender in the uh, coming seasons in silver yeah, I think he's uh, he's definitely got the pace to uh, to do that sort of thing. So yeah, it's uh, just about getting the consistency back again and uh, and uh, and getting the uh, getting the results and the finishes rather than the rather than the DNFs would be good. And uh, Fran there is um, had an adventure at turn uh, 12 there, the infamous turn 12, isn't it? A bit like turn 4 in Hungary. Oh, goodness me. And there's a um, car parked in the middle of the road there. I think that was Razor. Both Ferraris there having a bit of a mare uh, to uh, start off the Australian Grand Prix, unfortunately. Um, uh, Razor, um, of course, uh, mentioned about uh, the Kings, about Kings um, having um, a lot of races under his belt. What about Razor as well? Razor um, uh, seems to... Does, uh, it's always turned up near enough week in week out race right? and um, fantastic stuff as well as, oh my goodness me then and look at how close they were coming out of the pits as Fran there coming back into the race action as well as um, that was a shame for Fran because uh, he was batting away in fourth position there but uh, turn 12 um, it's very difficult like turn 4 and hungry at Nolsey as old King Zoom is going for an adventure on the grass there um, at turn 12 you've got to be careful aren't you yeah, so it's, well, I think, uh, like I said, in the, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, I can't remember which, which, which one it was now, but, uh, yeah, there's always one turn, at least on every track, that sort of, if, if you touch it or you, or you go over at the wrong angle, it'll just throws you off, puts you in a spin, and uh, it puts you in a wall. Um, yeah, so, and it seems like uh, turn 12, that's that your cane. Uh, on this game, anyway, is, is just the uh, is is the one to do that round Australia, anyway. Um, it, I, I, unfortunately, it's like the turn four around uh, around Hungary. If you if you get on the curb too much, and uh, it would just sort of spit you out. So it uh, yeah, it's a bit dangerous, isn't it that one? Oh, it is indeed, and unfortunately, a lot of drivers can attest to that as well, as that they've been the hedge around uh, turn twelve more often than not, haven't they? Of course, even a good and Massa had a um, had an adventure there in turn in two thousand and thirteen, and look, safety cars bunched them all back up, which has made this race very juicy indeed. Then, and for uh, for um, the third uh, for the third uh, highlights reel in a row is uh, back up there indeed, isn't he? Um, uh, for uh, so yeah, really shown a very strong, uh, very strong uh, contendership for the uh, second half of the season. Um, as Hunter is leading the pack away, Faxon has uh, made his way up to fourth position. Droffer, I think, um, from this race onwards, is uh, really starts to become um, really starts to become a bigger factor in the silver in the silver races from here on in, is, um, because uh, he is uh, always at the sharp end, of more or less, isn't he? Um, but I keep saying this a lot about a lot of drivers in qualifying. Um, we seem to have a completely different quality starting grid. Is uh, wow, look at that on the outside from there um, <laughs> on the outside of uh, Vitor. You don't see many people do that. Uh, many people do uh, that to Vitor very often. But in qualifying, we seem to have a very different grid to the uh, race uh, results, though, don't we? As, um, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> They're now getting uh, too close for comfort. And I'm sure that that is a race-long uh, battle as well, actually, being told in front. As I'm sure they come to blows again later as well. It's a double cream cart there. The very um, the very experienced double. Um, it was... Uh, it was um, He's very good. He's a very good uh, team player. He really is. Uh, we've mentioned about. Uh, we've mentioned team quite a lot in this uh, in this video. It's both Williams is also being um, in close company as well. And talking of Williams, uh, Granty, who is the champion for season two, uh, very um, is a very good ad advocate from uh, for ALR, isn't he? Because he's always in the comments there, always cheering on Ghost and uh, Serious Motion, of course, as he is a Williams driver as well. So uh, hats off to Granty and Twan, of course, as we we're just watching the uh, Renault team and Twan, um, one of the ALR fan uh, favourites, isn't he? Uh, Twan is. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, He's also in the comments as well, then. So just uh, hats off to those guys. It um, always uh, it always helps me in the commentary box as well. And look at that as a drop and fax and uh, turn the blows. And unfortunately, that incident um, was a bit. Uh, I felt a bit dicey, wasn't it? And I think it was a bit uh, rude there from fax and. Uh, and obviously, I hate I keep putting you on the spot here because uh, I know you are a much better judge of uh, better, much better judge of incidents. So how did you, what did you make of that one? Um, I think that was a bit a bit brutal from fax and. Oh yeah, it was. So uh, you know, unfortunately, he decided that he wasn't going to stick around after that one. So uh, it's a shame that it ruined Drofter's race, really. Oh my goodness, man! Really did, because Drofter, I was.
was a was a change for him. But uh, of course, unfortunately, uh, the uh, crash didn't help him. But I meant in terms of pace there. Um, well, I think that's what I meant anyway. But um, in terms of pace there, I, mean, I thought he was fantastic in this Australian Grand Prix. And um, you see there's instances galore. The two Williamses are now uh, close together as well. Um, we mentioned earlier on the video about the Williams team, a fantastic, a fantastic pair, and they really complemented each other really well. Well, Bjarne's made his way up in the fourth position as well. Um, Faxan is now starting to bear down on the front too. And so we're just taking a look as uh, Faxan is uh, trying to dispatch a force. Uh, force is not the easiest man to overtake, is he? Uh, as we see in Hungary, I've uh, really had a bit of a uh, father leader behind him in Hungary. And again, there are uh, Faxan, very robust against Faxan, of course. Is, um, uh, but defending's an art in Formula One, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, 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 just, he just positioned the car pretty well there and, uh, and, ma and maintained the position. And uh, yeah, that, that's fair enough. I mean, he's, he's uh, well within his right to do that. Uh, so long as it doesn't cause any incidents or any issues, then uh, yeah, um, go for it. But uh, yeah, just got to be careful, that's all. And, and he was, and he uh, kept the position. And it was very good defending indeed then. Um, as you can see, uh, Hunter is coming the pits then, and he has gone to the medium uh, compound tires, hasn't he? If you remember this race back in gold, there was um, there was a lot of uh, stra there was a lot of um, strategy was there involved with a lot of guys on soft tires, whilst young guys went onto the hard tires. So um, this is um, so this was here where I was uh, thinking about um, is anyone going to go on the hard tires? We well, got a lot more guys on the hard tires as well. We were just watching our hands on the hard tires and Kingsley on the hard tires as well. I think Hunter was on the um, was on the hard tires as well. I believe yes, he was. I need to adjust my contact lens lenses here. Uh, Fat Sam is leading the race at the moment there with YBR second and Silver um, with uh, Silver. Um, I've now renamed him now. He's not Silver Mushroom, uh, Serious Mushroom. Now he's in third position doing a cracking job there. Alhan um, in we're on board for, uh, as well as uh, him in King Zone there is uh, having a good old scrap here. I was enjoying this. Uh, I was enjoying this as well. Um, and I, I do also enjoy uh, uh, Alhan's helmet there. Beautiful helmet design. Um, I haven't mentioned the helmet in uh, any of these reviews yet, and also so I think you should be proud of me. Well, I almost got there. Um, unfortunately, about three hours into recording, I mentioned the helmet. Um, so it's, uh, it's, uh, um, Alhan is on the inside into turn 11. That's a fantastic maneuver. But Kingsley was not giving up, was he? Uh, but he did, um, he did think better of it. And that's, um, that's it's very mature, isn't it? A very mature thing for a racing driver to do. Um, someone like myself, who, um, who would probably have stuck my nose in there and probably would have taken both of us out there. So that's a very good thing to do. We mentioned it earlier, didn't we? Um, about how sensible some drivers are. And I think King's end was what we um, as uh, Hunter going on the outside there. That's a splendid overtake from Hunter. Brilliant stuff there. My goodness me. Um, yeah, good stuff from Hunter. But... Um, as Kingston was not giving up though, was he? He's going back on the outside. Always have mentioned of how a car he was uh, uh, a lot before, and um, he was uh, definitely giving Hunter run for his money. But yeah, um, how difficult is it to back out of a battle when you're like in the heat of the moment and you've got to think better of it? Well, <laughs> well, he's still in the heat of the moment now. Well, I think that might be the done and dusted. So um, yeah, and also how difficult is it to um, just back out of a battle knowing that uh, knowing that this isn't going to help your race time? Because we did mention it earlier on, didn't we? But uh, in the heat of a moment where you've oh goodness me. Um, Ghost there has uh, done a complete 306 there and fantastic car control to uh, keep out the walls and good stuff from his teammate now not to take him out as well. Uh, I will get out eventually, no, so apologies. Um, in Kingdom, how <laughs> difficult is it to um, back out of a battle in a heat of a moment then? Because um, he did that very well there, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, you've got to pick your battles, of course, when you're going through any race, but... Um... It just depends on uh, on obviously your 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 tire tire performance, your actual race pace as well, and uh, and whoever the person is, uh, and their tire performance and, and race pace as well behind you. So um, yeah, you've got to you've got to make sure that uh, if you're if you're going to battle, you you can uh, you're going to have to maintain that position, or you can be able to maintain that position, and um, and you've got to be able to um, keep it keep it clean and keep it safe and respectful, really. So. Um, uh, I think um, well we're both we're just on on board there with uh, with our hand and uh, and we're on board with the King's Home and uh, King's Home and uh, I think it was Hunter wasn't it uh, uh, battle as well and both yeah. both drivers were very respectful with each other and obviously you you want to gain the place but uh, at the end of the day you, you can not you're not going to win any uh, win any races or or get any points if you uh, if you take yourself and, and another driver out so um, it's uh, yeah you got you got you got to factor in that you're not going to you're going to Get some points and and not uh, not negatively affect yourself and other people's races. Yeah, and no, I think that um, that is a very good well, that's a very good way to um, adi um, to uh, go about your league racing, isn't it? And um, you just look at some of the uh, names that is there. Faxan takes the lead of the Australian Grand Prix, a fantastic go take. Bear in mind, Faxan is on the hot, on the uh, soft tires, and whilst um, Hunter is on the uh, is on the hard tires. So two step compound a difference of tire there. 
and um, and uh, yeah, so facts on there. I think. Wonder if he learned from gold. There is. Uh, it was a very interesting race because uh, Sun Joy was lost a uh, tire, um, ran out of tires towards dinner. Of course, Grant was one of them after getting a puncture. But yeah, just looking at those names up and down the list there on the left hand side tower. There we've got the likes of Drop uh, uh, King's Own, Ghost Recon, Serious Mushroom, uh, Forza, uh, YBR, Al Han, and Hunter. All of them guys were scoring consistently, and um, and now that's because that's because they're all thinking about getting to the checkered flag. They're not thinking that uh, they're not thinking if I lose this place, it's the end of the world, which uh, is kind of what I think, and um, <laughs> which I really shouldn't. And um, and that's why they all score points on a consistent basis, isn't it? Um, and so just back on board of Al Han. Al Han's become the star of the uh, star of the show again, isn't he? Is uh, he seems to be once again battling through the field. He's on the soft tires this time, and um, he is catching it on at Kingsham uh, as well. Coming as Kingsham made a mistake there actually, and I think that's going to uh, make Al Han's job slightly more difficult. Um, unfortunately for uh, Kingsham, and uh, uh, Al Han is up into sixth position. And good stuff indeed there from the uh, Haas driver. Uh, we're coming into the twilight of this Australian Grand Prix now, and. Um, it was a fantastic race over, wasn't it? As we said, I was, um, I think, uh, in those two races, no one seemed to like Australia because we had a bit low attendance there. But Silver, particularly, um, was a fantastic race. It really was, Nolte. Uh, what was your overall opinion of uh, the Australian Grand Prix? Yeah, I think uh, it was, there was battling all up and down the field. As you, as, as you can see, again, the midfield battle was uh, was incredible again. Um, there was a few bumps and scrapes here and there, but uh, Facts landed really well from, I think it was 16th or last, technically, on the grid. Uh, to to win the race, um, unfortunately, it's in with Drofter, which uh, uh, he left the league after that. But um, yeah, so but um, obviously, well done to um, to everybody who actually finished finished the race. With them. They did a fantastic job of uh, of uh, getting around it. We're getting around a pretty difficult circuit, in my opinion. It was a really good, a really good drive from Fax as well. Um, I forgot you was actually started last on the grid, so um, it just shows how good it was in that race, wasn't it? And um, also shows how good the um, how good the drivers were as well. So we only had sixteen cars, but I think only um, we only had three DNFs there, or uh, well, four DNFs because Double Zero unfortunately uh, left the uh, left the race early on. Um, he, he seems to exit stage left by um, every um, early, so I'm wondering if um, he has a plane to catch. Uh, but unfortunately, um, Double Zero also out as well. So we had twelve cars left in that race. So Fantastic stuff. As um, as Ghost Recon at Moon up a position, there was a lot of there was a lot of a negative uh, negative in the second half as they was all dropping down the positions there. Serious Mushroom moving up three there, the big gainer Hunter also moving up to fifth, and Alhan dropping down to six. And YBR is still in fourth position, and the top three as you were. Um, in the constructors, and Haas actually overtook a Red Bull in the constructors there. But I think that was the last time Red Bull would lose the lead in the constructors because uh, I think they're now um, well off into the distance there. Onto the German Grand Prix then, and we've got another wet race. I think this is a wet race throughout the whole of the um, throughout the whole of the event there. And um, unfortunately, um, I also disconnected as well, and I also muted my mic. Um, so I think it was a bad day at the office for me. <laughs> and uh, luckily, uh, Nolsey's amazing editing skills there have really um, got me out of a uh, got me out of a deep puddle. And uh, there was a lot of deep puddles around this Hockenham circuit. Um, but um, again, a pristine driving, uh, more or less. There's there a bit of rubber there, but a bit of rubber doesn't hurt anyone, does it? Uh, is that? Uh, whoa! Look at Alpi go flying down there. It's, um, and we haven't spoke much about RP. Um, RP doesn't seem to doesn't seem to finish a lot of races, does he? Um, he does seem to be involved in a lot of scrapes and battles, though, does uh, RP? I think that um, if RP did um, would race from the beginning, I feel that he would have got a, a couple more points, which is probably the uh, which is probably a very silly statement to make because obviously he has more races. But I mean, in terms of, I think the more um, the more race uh, the more uh, drivers that we have uh, acquired over the silver, but I think the quality has gone up quite. Um, yeah, quite dramatically, hasn't it? And I think the likes of Alpi, who probably would have scored points. Uh, oh dear, as I was getting very feisty there in um, coming out of the uh, fast King of Turn Seven. I think the quality has gone up on it, Nosey. So that's why um, likes of Alpi probably hasn't scored as many points as he would like. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I think. Well, as I said, the beginning of the season, obviously didn't they hadn't raced with each other very often, or uh, if at all. Uh, so they didn't really know each other that well in terms of on track performance and and. Uh, how they sort of behave on track and that sort of thing. So, like I said, in the, in, back in Russia, it's a learning. It was a learning performance for all of them to um, to get to understand everybody really and and um, and sort of fill them out on track and see um, see how everyone's going to react if they if they went to, for an overtake here or if they defended this way or something like that. So uh, uh, over time, that all they all became accustomed to each other and especially with the, with the midfield battle being as it is, uh, being so close, then. Um, 
they just they got familiarized with each other pretty, pretty quickly and um and everybody sort of improved together at the same time so yeah like like you said with um joiners like lpe who have joined a bit late uh, further on in the season they um they're a bit below that learning curve compared to everybody else at the same time so uh yeah it's been a it's been a been the same process for lpe in the years uh, he's getting there and i think um we can look forward to a, a good second half of the season for him as well yeah, he's uh, starting to he's starting to accumulate some points. Uh, um, um, I think in the second half of the season he will start to accumulate some points. I feel because, uh, of course, um, the more he gets to, as you said, the more he gets to know these drivers, the more that he will. Um the more you get used to it. So good stuff indeed. I'm looking forward to the um, next season of Silver. How dare I wish away this uh, incredible first season, but the uh, second season is going to be so competitive because you mentioned the midfield. It's absolutely fantastic. We've mentioned the midfield all the way through as so I finally get back in the session, but it takes me another lap or two to realise that I'm not talking, <laughs> that I'm talking to myself. Um, it's, uh, it's, and uh, and uh, luckily, there, luckily, that's uh, Nosey is uh, was uh, on, on cue when I needed him most. Uh, that's why he's always sat in the commentary box with me to make sure that I don't go off on a tangent or randomly leave. And uh, then he also had to tell me that my mic was switched off so uh, let's talk about that the better shall we let's move on um yeah double zero on a fantastic race there in a hockey and i'm a really good pace there once again as we mentioned in australia um explains as well making his debut and i think explains been a great addition to the league and same with on uh, andre as well um and, and paulie orange look at all these uh, debut talks we added in germany it was a fantastic and uh, that's what he mentioned about that's what i started to mention about the quality um, because all these guys are uh, relatively new or making their debut. Oh, dear. As um, We've got some shenanigans going on with Paulie Orange and Andre there. The two debuts on there, unfortunately, are uh, coming to blows. But, um, yeah, the quality uh, the quality that has been acquired from this race onwards would seem to uh, go up um, go up tenfold, really, didn't it? Um, and Nolsey, um, I've got to say, these, uh, these latest recruitments in silver are absolutely fantastic to watch. They're fantastic drivers. And uh, somehow they've made silver even better, which I didn't think was possible. Um, absolutely incredible from all these guys, isn't it? Yeah, they've done a fantastic. Sorry, they've done a fantastic job there. I uh, know. Uh, obviously, explains um, this was his first race in, in silver, and uh, it was his home home Grand Prix because he's actually uh, at Trump, uh, German German national. So yeah, he's done a did a fantastic job on that. Uh, yeah, it was unfortunately got thrown into this race, and um, and it, it was a bit of a bit of bad conditions, a bit of bad conditions for the race itself. But uh, yeah, he did a fantastic job, and uh, uh, despite it still not being a favourite track for him being German, but. Uh, he did a great job, and uh, and so a double zero um, being from Austria, it was quite close to his home track. But um, yeah, he he uh, he'd, uh, did a great race as well. So both of those guys have come in for this race and uh, and absolutely smashed it. And uh, Paulie Orange there was was uh, another friend of Glock's who uh, was very quick on his day as well. But uh, it doesn't seem this race was going going that way for him. But uh, no, he, he did all right in the, in the end, and he's uh, made some improvements as well so far this this season. You've took the words right my mouth with Paulie Orange there. He did. Um, he had a very difficult start, and then um, he, um, I think he had an absolutely mammoth stint on the intermediate tyres, and unfortunately, um, unfortunately, he pushed them slightly too far. I think he's about four or five laps away from what had been an absolutely incredible stint. Look at that. He's moved all the way up into a fifth position. I think he's the only man not to pit. Um, uh, round about half distance there. Of course, the, tra- the conditions was basically steady throughout the race, wasn't it? As it was just steady rain, and um, so really uh, the uh, strategy kind of called itself, didn't it? As Double Zero was in the pits as well. I think this was a Double Zero's first um, first time he uh, finished the race in the silver. So good stuff in Double Zero. As he's uh, as I said um, before, a bit of consistency perhaps, and uh, he might, he would definitely be a championship contender. Uh, Flea also making his debut as well in the Ferrari. And of course, he's also been promoted to a full time seat um, seat recently. So congratulations to uh, Flea. And um, he is also um, he's also similar to LP where um, he's um, where he's just going to get quicker and quicker, and I think he will start to uh, score some uh, big points on board with Hunter at the moment in the um, McLaren, who's just chased down Alhan at the moment. There, just like at the points, of course, Hunter at this uh, at this time in the championship has been promoted. I think he was uh, second in the championship with YBR in uh, third. Um, so uh, this was um, this was definitely, of course, the top three get promoted to gold. Then, so this is where it's starting to get very serious. With the uh, unfortunately, we've lost uh, F1 2019 and Fax and uh, to different uh, for different uh, different in uh, circumstances as Paulie Orange is now coming around sat then as we're almost to the end of this uh, to the end of this incredible race there um as you know, uh, so, so see Paulie Orange there is now just going slow because of that punch there isn't he so he was six laps away from absolutely having a good a mammoth effort there wasn't it um he did uh, he did push the um he did push the tire slightly too much there but uh it was definitely worth a squeeze, wasn't it, Nolsey? Yeah, I'm surprised he managed to get them that far into the race, to be honest, because, uh, yeah, usually it does tell you you need to, um, it was probably about halfway through the race, where, it, especially if it's going to be in these, these conditions for the whole race, 
as uh, LPE very dangerously there, uh, too close to him. But uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm surprised he got that far into the race. Really, with those tyres, it usually tells him to. You usually tells you if it's going to rain for the whole race uh, to uh, to make a pit stop until halfway through for a uh, new fresh set of boots. But um, yeah, he decided to uh, to power through, um, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't pay off for him on this occasion. It didn't know, but um, yeah, um, as you said, then obviously hats off to um, uh, to uh, Paulie Orange there. Unfortunately, had some poorly tires, didn't they? Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've had some really bad puns over the season. I'm, I'm surprised that um, <laughs> I'm surprised Nosey sticks with me. To be fair, um, <laughs> with all the uh, with all the appalling puns going on, be Tom there spinning just in front of the um, uh, Mercedes grandstand there. As, um, he was having a, a very bad day in the office, wasn't he? Unfortunately, but yeah, these conditions are very, um, in Formula One in the wet. It's absolutely it's a it's a skill that um, is very difficult to master. But 17 cars remain on a third on that 30 out of 34 um, out of 19 that started. That is an absolutely fantastic achievement, isn't it? Uh, isn't it, Nosey? We got um, we got a bit of Matrix style going on here between Alhan and uh, Sirius Mushroom. Impressive stuff indeed. Then. Uh, is this the real world? We're not sure, but um, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely fantastic stuff from all these guys. Seventeen cars in a wet race—that's unheard of in most leagues, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show the um, the skill and the talent of these drivers. Really, it just shows that they uh, they can do it um, in these conditions and uh, and prove everybody uh, well, show everybody how to do it. Really, because um, they, they, I mean, they set, set a great example for uh, for, um, for other leagues, for other races, and everybody across. Uh, um, across the uh, across the um, sort of online racing community, because they, I mean, it's difficult to um, difficult to finish these sort of races, and uh, I say it's probably it's more difficult for me to finish these sort of races because I don't know how to race. But um, yeah, so credit to uh, credit to everybody who took part and to finish this race. It was one of the highlights of the season so far for Silver. So yeah, yeah, they did all did a really great job, and the qualifying session was absolutely incredible as well. So uh, yeah, really good job to them, and uh, well done to Glock Double Zero and Explains getting on the podium it was and I think that was the biggest winning margin in uh, Glock's career wasn't it so um, and uh, as you mentioned earlier on in the uh, in the uh, show uh, Nolte, you said he, he was pretty good in the wet my goodness me he's very good in the wet isn't he Hunter and Al had no, po uh, no pounds there and saved the Glock as well so hats off to those guys just so I mentioned that we had no retirements we had two that drop off um, towards the end there but I think that was more of uh, guys calling it a day as um, as it was basically near the end then so good stuff indeed explains on his debut moving at nine positions on double zero also finally getting some points on the board there two big movers there Moon started to for 12th in and uh, 12th and 13th uh, draw for Moon at six, and this is where he really started to climb up the standings as well, didn't he? And also King's own Moon up as well. In the constructors, then Red Bull are back in the lead now. And look at that with a 60 point advantage, racing point and climbing up to four, fourth position as well. Big moves, Mercedes dropping down three positions as well. Now we're on to uh, Mexico, and um, as uh, I think that. Uh, the um, I think that again, and the retirement rate in Mexico is absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? In terms of the lack of them, but unfortunately, the start line didn't go too well, did it? As a YBR and LPE, um, unfortunately, didn't go too um, didn't go too far at all. They didn't get past the start uh, line, did they? And we had a virtual safety car straight away. I think LPE, unfortunately, that was literally um, he joined the session late anyway, and uh, I think all he did was about a couple of yards there. So uh, unfortunately for um, YBR, um, he didn't um, he didn't have a very good experience in Mexico, did he? Glock also making the return as well. Andre um, in second position, moment drop there. Uh, in third position there and uh, this as I said then Droffer has really started climbing the standings quite uh, quite quickly now absolutely good stuff indeed then we have Portly Orange in a double zero down um, in the midfield then and um, we're expecting some incredible uh, racing from uh, those guys up and uh, down the field then um, um, but Nolsey uh, what did um, what did you make of that start line instant I've got to say it was a very um, poor it was very poor uh, camera angle and I didn't really expect to have a start line instant like that but uh, I think it was just um, unfortunate wasn't it yeah I'm not sure what happened there I think there was a there was a car that wasn't moving off the start, um, and um, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was just a, a, a start an incident it seemed because it wasn't over the line, so it wasn't the first lap incident. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what happened really exactly. But uh, I would have thought if one car in front didn't go, then it would they would go through. But uh, clearly that wasn't the case, and for uh, some reason it caused uh, two retirements unfortunately. But um, I mean the the rest of the race, um, it, it really just sort of uh, switched. They switched back on and and um and put on a really good show and made it a really entertaining, uh, really entertaining uh, race at the end. 
It does indeed. And I think um, Germany and Mexico, I really, um, I, I had the privilege actually just to um, to commentate on the race action as well. And uh, also just to um, kind of explain how incredible, um, how incredible, well, I'll explain as best I can there, um, of how incredible these guys are um, of race now. Look at that. What a, <laughs> Andre there was um, <laughs> coming for a day late and a dollar short there on drop there. But um, how he didn't go to the wall was absolutely incredible. I don't think he got any damage off that either. So, uh, yeah, um, he was under control all the time. Danny Rick esque, wasn't he? Um, from there, as Danny likes to, um, likes to have a couple of um, lunges from far back, and uh, somehow he didn't get any. Um didn't get any damage either, did he? Um, uh, it's incredible, it really is. Hats off. And uh, I, I don't understand how he didn't get no damage there because uh, <laughs> I just breathe on my front wing and it falls apart. So incredible stuff there from uh, from uh, um, Andre and he's even having one so it goes, goes there and uh, to try for the Mercedes uh, in this race for one-off appearance there, um, <laughs> which uh, I think uh, goes just fans to change the scenery, didn't they? And uh, look at this, getting very tense down in the mini, mini stadium sector as well. Uh, uh, Mexico, um, of course, uh, new, uh, newest uh, uh, race to the calendar isn't it um, and um, I think it's probably some great overtaking and comfort yes as well lovely stuff and Ghost there being overtaken by Andre but I think Ghost had it I think this was um, one of Ghost's more competitive drivers wasn't it and um, having some great battles there with um, the cars he doesn't normally have battles with so Ghost there doing a good showing today wasn't he in uh, Mexico yeah I think he's um, he's one of those drivers who's improved as well as the season's gone on as well so uh, yeah hats off to him he's doing a great job he really is, isn't he? And um, I think, um, I, I, as I say, I do like the Williams pairing of uh, of Ghost and Sirius Mushroom. They're really good. Um, they're really good. A good pairing, and they do complement each other, don't they? And uh, Ghost, and uh, once again, um, Ghost there is um, back in the thick of things, isn't he? As um, Andre at this stage of the um, this stage of the race, there is really struggling. But of course, they're, they're on different tire compounds. Of course, Ghost uh, bolted on a set of soft tires, wasn't he? From the start, and then just go and attack him, wasn't he? Go lock and um, and Droffer. Droffer, I think this is Droffer's impressive performance there wasn't it from the drop and look at Gosa having to uh um, again there lesser drivers would have uh, would have like myself would have tried to uh, would have uh, basically wouldn't have been able to do that and would have been just straight in the wall there and look at this uh, Paulie Orange there I think this is a very impressive drive from Paulie Orange in this race um, I was um, I was really impressed with Paulie Orange how he just uh, it was just one at a time same with double zero as well oh he's getting very close to come for there uh, it's a um, it's it's a uh, it's a skill to get through the field isn't it and uh, pick him up and uh, get um, yeah just get through the skill uh, uh, get through the field there but one at a time picking them off absolutely fantastic stuff it really was there um, from all these guys um, we have mentioned that already in the stream haven't we about uh, guys uh, going through going through field and uh, coming off uh, nice and deep double zero all over the back of King's um, as well as the um, as the uh, maybe the fastest drivers on this day in history which is now starting to come back from the field the likes of double zero and uh, Pauli Orange there was just following uh, double zero through as well is it easier to overtake when you've got a faster uh, car um, in the uh, midfield there coming through as well does it just make it easier for you just to um, have some to follow some to target uh, well I think it definitely benefits you with the, with the DRS that you can have and uh um, and, and the sort of extra speed boost that you get from it as well, especially around this tr this track where the where the, the straight's so long as well, it really helps you uh, get through the field quite quickly. So um, yeah, I would have to say it does. Yeah. And um, in Ghost there, it's becoming the ghost show the one, doesn't he? Unfortunately, he's got a three second penalty as um, as he just got by Asol there. Ghost is coming the pits as well, and look at double zero and um, and Ghost recon once again. <laughs> this is coming back in the back away again. Oh my goodness me! I think um, I think Ghost might have me on this one actually guys so uh, I think he uh, gave me some uh, uh, some magic stars which is my favourite chocolate uh, anyway uh, enough about that as we come through the uh, Mansell turn as well then and um, he is on his way but uh, double zero at the moment now um, I, I was really enjoying this race uh, uh, I think it was fantastic fantastic race craft fantastic overtakes uh, up and down the field there there is balling all the way and um, and I think uh, apart from that virtual safety car attests to the lack of incidents here um, I think that uh, um, uh, Nosey I think you get bored after Monday races don't you with uh, literally See nothing to deal with. Oh well, it's uh, <laughs> plenty of entertainment on the Sundays and the Saturday, uh, Sundays and the Mondays, rather. Um, yeah, it's from ALR. So yeah, it's uh, these guys put on a really good show every time, pretty much. And and you can, uh, well, especially on, on with with this bunch here with the silver guys, um, you can you can rely on it can be an entertaining race with uh, plenty of overtakes and obviously that midfield battle that we touched on before as well. So uh, yeah, it's it's, um, it's it's plenty for me. So I'm, I'm very happy with these guys and and how these guys have been racing. They've done a great job so far this season and uh, yeah, credit to them they've, uh, there's, um, there's been a few pumps and scrapes here, work here and there but that's uh, that always happens in league racing but uh, uh, everyone's been very fair and, uh, and respectful about it as well so um, 
yeah, credit to the credit to them all, and uh, and hopefully uh, they carry this on for uh, the second half of the season as well. Indeed, indeed, and of course, because it's so competitive, you are expecting bumps and scrapes, uh, scrapes, aren't you? I mean, um, uh, if you um, if you don't if you don't get involved in any wheel to wheel combat and end up um, end up damaging your car, are you trying hard enough? That's that's the question. I would also say though that um, that uh, if you if you are an inspiring uh, league driver or anything like that, just to um, who, um, just to come and watch some of these silver races, they're absolutely incredible, isn't it? The way they drive and the way they uh, go about calculating is and that was maybe a little miscalculation there on Golden. Uh, uh, in a King Zones um, battling there unfortunately that did get a bit messy uh, so that was really bad timing by me again but um, yeah in terms of um, yeah, in terms of if you want to if you want to inspire a lead driver uh, then definitely uh, definitely I'll watch some of these uh, silver races they're absolutely fantastic the way that oh goodness me Ghost has shown his rear wheel there on King Zones <laughs> my goodness me um, but yeah go, go back and watch some of these uh, silver races they're absolutely impeccable driving it really is uh, um, and uh, it's been a fantastic uh, first half of uh, silver hasn't it of course a new lead Remember a new league. This is this is things like a new league, does it? And um, if it's second nature, that was it. It's a uh, it's a race on Mondays. Um, it's absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, I can't compliment this enough, really. I'm running out of words to um to just uh, you know, say how great it was. And once again, we got Ghosting uh, Kings of the Battle it away. I'm um, having a fantastic battle between these um, two. And really, I've really enjoyed um, yeah, watching every moment of uh, Silver. Um, it's been absolutely cracking stuff. Glock, remember, and uh, Paulie Orange. Uh, Paulie Orange has made his way up into second position now, and he was home in on Glock it was 5 seconds there as, Glo- as Paul Arms going on the alternative strategy Droff for doing a cracking job in third position there with double zero in fourth but he is um, double zero I think he was on a two-stop strategy at this point now I think he was the only man on a two-stop strategy he did a very cracking job there of um Getting himself back on the fourth position with Andre in fifth position. Um, I think uh, this was definitely Paul Orange's best uh, race to date, wasn't it? And um, he was gaining on Glock. Uh, Droff uh, in a third position as well. I'd uh, say that, um, as I was saying uh, before um, in the previous races, Droff has really now started to climb up the standings incredibly quickly as well. And once again, Kings and Ghost can't leave each other alone, can they? Um, <laughs> they were tied together, weren't they? For the, uh, for the end of this race. They really were, and I think that they'd be. Um, I wonder if they'd be best buds after that race. Um, they just seemed to be uh, locked horns, and um, I, I didn't mind. I was absolutely loving it. So uh, uh, it was really good stuff indeed. Uh, just a just a quick mention on Paulie Orange, uh, double zero there coming through the field there. Um, I think it was a very very well nice work from both drivers, wasn't it? Yeah, I think um, both well, both of them are very quick and quick races, and they um, they they've definitely got the pace to to win races um, and, uh, and compete for the top uh, the top spot. Um, I think Paulie Orange, obviously after this race, uh, he's in the better in this one, but um, as another reserve appearance. But he was offered the uh, full-time seat in Mercedes, which uh, which he's taken as well. So um, unfortunately, that's where F1 2019 had to uh, had to leave uh, leave the league. But um, yeah, so he's uh, he's really stepped up his uh, stepped up his game um, late um, in the um, in the latter half uh, of, of these of these races. Um, and hopefully he can carry that on in the uh, in the second half too. And double zero, same for him as well. I mean, he can, he can, he's definitely can. Uh, he's got the ability to excel in in these sort of these sorts of races. And hopefully, oh, we've got a bit of a well, three wide into turn one there. Um, hopefully, uh, double zero can sort of carry that on as well and uh, be uh, be a bit more consistent, consistent and and get some more points on the board for him as well. And a Glock there win the race. I almost missed that because it was getting very juicy at the end there, wasn't it? And look at this. I still can't even take my uh, take my eyes off uh, off this battle there. Um, it's uh, also as I've got gone forward as well. Then as um, I think um, free they do say freeze the crowd, but in this case I was absolutely loving this as well. Um, really good stuff indeed. And that was the uh, that was the end of the Mexican Grand Prix there. Glock and um, Paulie Orange very close together in the end. Paulie Orange had some magnificent pace. What would have happened if he uh, finished at the um, if he started um, near the uh, top of the um, top of the standings then? Anyway, we are. Um, no, that is um, as we're going to take a look, final check at the standings. Then um, in a, just a few moments, as uh, I'm just waffling through the final results of the uh, Mexican Grand Prix. Um, hats off to Alhan once again. Then in fourth position, there no penalties at all. Brilliant stuff there from Alhan. Around here was um, absolutely um, was absolutely incredible to have no penalties. My goodness me, um, lack of penalties, lack of damage, lack of action in silver. Um, in a nutshell, silver has been absolutely fantastic. It has been a proper success.
Jets um, in its first season. In the first half of the season, here's the final standings of the first part of uh, season one of ALO's, ALR Silver. As Doug moving up one position, he's in the 14th position there. At the top of the tree is still Glock there. Alhan moving up a couple positions as well. Wobbyar is in the promotion place along with Hunter. Thank you all for joining us. We are going to we are looking forward to uh, the second half of a uh, season uh, of season one Silver. Um, part two coming up in a few, uh, well, coming up later on. Thank you.